people want to have a go, I mean, I'm always one to give it a go. See if you can write some code, see if it does a clever search, and you know, it would be a major breakthrough if someone could find a number with a multiplication persistence of 12. You say there's a conjecture that you can't beat 11. Is that based on any kind of anything beyond the fact they can't find anything? You know, I don't know. And uh, I don't believe them. So I'd give it a go, as, as has been documented before. I'm like, don't tell me that there's, there's not going to be any. And I'd, uh, I'd slam into it. But you'd need to be reasonably smart. And also, I'm doing this with out-of-the-box Python. It's going to hit some issues once the numbers get too big, just because of the way it handles um, numbers. I'd have to use, there's a library called NumPy, which you use for doing maths. There's ways handling, you know, arbitrarily big or arbitrarily long ints. So you'd need to be a little bit more clever, I suspect, by the time you get up to over 200 digits, the out-of-the-box settings won't have the precision you need. I don't see why it would be 11, like, but of course I wouldn't, but... Like... Why 11? Why 11? And, and it's going to be to do with the base, because all base 2 numbers have a persistence of 1, because you've either got a 0 or you've got all ones, right? And then that's one, right? So, and then there's a conjecture that all base three numbers above a certain size, I forget what it is, have a zero in them. So that's gonna put an upper bound on base three. And so you could explore this in different bases. I don't know if anyone has, I've not seen an equation that takes the base you're in and gives you the persistence. Although, given it's only a conjecture that leavens the max, I suspect it hasn't been done yet. And yet, if you wanted, lower hanging fruit would be to code something up to do a sufficiently exhaustive search to get what you suspect is the biggest persistence possible in different bases, and then see if there's a pattern. It almost feels like if 11 what is the true limit, it would be an easy proof. Yeah, it, yeah, it feels like it. And the other way of doing it, because we're doing exhaustive search down, the other way would be to start with this and go, well, how can I get to that from a bigger number? Right? And so now you need a bigger number, all of which, like this only has, well this, the next one up, so this number here, the next one down, all its prime factors are seven or smaller because they have to fit in a single digit, right? And so maybe if you take the prime factors of this, which I haven't done, you'll discover quickly there's a big prime factor in there that you can't get down to a single digit. So there's no way to get to here from taking the persistence of getting a different number and taking its multiplication digital root. So the other way is to try and grow them up. Start from small and then only continue the, the, the lines up where you never hit a prime factor, which is bigger than seven. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that, that's um, I'll leave it to the reader to have a go. Because it's a recursive function, so let's put steps as a new variable which goes in, which is initialized to zero. And then this is the first step. So, oh, no, this do, oh, this is the last step. So let's in here. If we get to here, if n is tiny, we can also then print um, our total steps, and then let's um, add on the string of how many steps it took. And then if it's not the end, we increment steps by uh, one. And what we need to do is just remember to feed the current value into the, oops, I hit paste. <sighs> steps, I'm not used to this keyboard. Okay. Right, so now we've got a running total of steps, which I think I've coded correctly. Let's, let's find out. Come on, you can beat two steps. Um, One more. I like the fact you're genuinely trying to, you're trying to work this out. At home, if you want, try and pick a number. See if you can beat Brady's current record of two. <laughs> uh, what about... Let me just try. What, yep. what about? There's no wrong answers. Nine, here. nine, nine, nine. Oh wow! Okay, nine, 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 nine. Four nines. So that's going to give us thirty-six, which is going to give us. Uh, oh, okay. We're going to go for it longer, which is going to give us eighteen, which is going to give us uh, eight.
Oh. Not bad. Not bad. Three. <laughs> That's a 50% increase. All right. <laughs> running Python, now it's got that. So we're gonna put in the persistence of, shall we do, um, what was your first number? So originally, oh, let's, let's do your guess of 9999, see what it does, 9999, and run. Hey, okay, so, um, first of all we got 6591, then we got 180. 6561. Why have we got 6561? That's interesting. I know why. I've made a mistake back here. I did. I added the digits for that one instead of multiplying them. Oh. So all the, I did the multiplication here. Here I've just um, added them. So that one there. Oh my goodness. If only we had some kind of classic expression we could use. <laughs> When I've made a mess. One day we will have a mascot for such a scenario. In you've, the meantime, you've, we don't. You've also proven the superiority of uh, machine over man. This is why I never trust my brain. Okay, <laughs> let's let's just spontaneously fix it in the edit. I don't think there's ever been a better time to point out Matt Parker has a new book out called Humble Pie, and it's all about mathematical mistakes. This was not deliberately done, but hey, here's what the book looks like. And there are links down in the video description if you want to check it out. It's a really good book. It's been a huge number one seller in Britain already. It's worth your time. Put lots of videos of them up online. For me, I mean, everyone else is like, it's not a very nice square, is it? Don't, what, should we tell Matt? He seems so excited about it. Well, you know what? I am excited about it. This is my square. Has it got a name? That hasn't got a name. I, I don't want to call it the Parker Square because it doesn't work properly. Everyone would be like, oh, the, that's a well, classic Parker Square. Or someone would do something that's almost right but not quite, and they go, that's a real Parker Square kind of move. So I'm not calling it the Parker Square.